Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. It is the Pokemon Perfect 2022 ADV Championship first semifinal. I'm not going to do any more recaps for this tournament. If you're here, you should have already watched the previous videos for this tournament. They're here on this channel. Please turn back now and go check those out if you've not already seen them. This first semi-final match is between Fredazi, playing on his usual Shitrock Enjoyer on the bottom, and Stratos, Stratos, also known as Jumpy23, on the top. Uh, these are players, Stratos, who was in Kalos Invitational 6 play-ins, briefly. <laughs> uh, and Fredazi, who many of you felt should have been in those play-ins, and certainly feel should be in play-ins next time, if there is, in fact, a Kalos Invitational 7. So this is for a spot in the finals. The other match, PK Legion Blues Energy, has not yet played out, so we don't know who the opponent would be. Uh, but the winner of that match is going to have to face the winner that we're going to see together right here. I know nothing about these games, haven't watched them, going in totally blind. So we're going to find out together. Here is Game 1 in the best of 3 set. Like I said, Shitrock Enjoyer is for Dazi. He's on the bottom. He'll stay in with his lead Coon. Stratos on the top will stay in with his lead Meta. It'll be a trade after Hydro Pump connects, and then boom happens. Cloyster is the follow-up for Stratos, and then Titar comes in, and again, they're both just going to stay in. Spikes and Crunch. Do we have a Boom Spam team for Stratos? Goes for Surf, which of course does more damage than Boom would have done. Crunch is going to get the kill, and there's no Dugtrio, which is not surprising. Dugtrio is not usually on Cloyster teams. That's an Earthquake blinking on a doll. And Shadow Ball. That must have been anticipating a Gengar that, as you see, did not come. So here's the follow-up HP. Presumably Bug. It could be Ghost, but it's probably Bug. It can occasionally run Ghost. Uh... These kind of teams for Stratos are usually pretty Gengar vulnerable, so maybe he's using that just to catch that Mon. But regardless, it's actually Claydol who ends up blowing up, and it's going to not kill Magneton, but the follow-up Mence will. This is looking like it is not going to be a very long game, moving quite quickly in this one. T-Tar gets foddered off to Rock Slide. We are nine turns in, and half the Mons in the game are dead. Full team now revealed for Stratos. That Meteor Mash is not taken well at all. It's either CB Mash or a very offensive Celebi, such as a Super B. And he's going to go for Leech Seed here, connecting with Mence, but obviously has to be nervous about HP flying. Back to Flygon, and there is DD, which Flygon is not going to be able to kill him with Rock Slide here, but if he has Protect, for example, he could maybe stall him out over time. He does go straight for Rock Slide, which is going to do a decent chunk, but like I said, not going to kill even with the Leech Seed in the sand. Mence is only going to have one more turn, however, and he's going to make good use of it. He's going to kill the Flygon on that turn, leaving Stratos with just Aerodactyl and Celebi. Like I said, fast game here. 14 turns, and we've got two pokes on each side. Aerodactyl comes in, really wants to not get paralyzed. 30% chance of power with Body Slam doesn't happen there. Earthquake, just in case Meta switched in. It didn't. Can't go for Rock Slide for that reason, because Meta obviously would resist that. So he's going for Earthquake, and he's going to need some crits. He does at least avoid the Paralysis again, but it doesn't change the situation. Non-crit, not good enough, and Body Slam kills the Aerodactyl. And this is looking like it's going to come down to a one-on-one. -on -one. Lax and Celebi are here. And Lax is gone as expected, so like I said, one-on-one -on -one situation, full health meta should have the advantage here against B, though it is always possible that he misses Mash, or that, or that Celebi gets an immediate crit. Well, that's one way to win. The vast majority of the time in this situation, it would be Fredazi taking this game, but Stratos getting the crit when he needs it is going to pull the comeback in a very fast-paced Game 1 just 21 turns, like I said, half the Mons in the game had been knocked out by turn 9, uh, and then we were down to 2-on-2 two two by turn 14. That's pretty damn fast, but Stratos gets the crit when he needs it. He has a two-turn window to get there. Alternatively, uh, he also could have dodged a Meteor Mash, so it wasn't a complete robbery. There were certainly a couple of ways that Stratos could have gotten there, but the majority of the time in this situation, it does go to Fredazi, and this, unfortunately for him, is not one of those times. 
So Stratos takes game one and is one game away from the finals for Dazi. Going to need to rattle off two in a row to uh, book his date with a currently unknown Italian opponent, but it will be an Italian either way, whether it is Leech or whether it is Blues. So let's move on to game two. Players on the same position. Shit Rock Enjoyer, Fredazzi on the bottom, Stratos on the top. Smeargle lead. Gonna stay in and get Brick Break, but he's gonna survive that, and the spore on the Mens could be devastating if he doesn't wake up quickly. First turn, he doesn't wake. Spikes go down. Endeavor. Still no. Spikes again. Still no. Long nap here. Spike layer number three. And still no. Really long nap here. Wakes up finally, and there's the brick break. And interesting that he went first there. I'm not clear what move Smeargle would have gone for there to be slower. So here comes Gar and Tar, and a critical hit. If he has HP Grass, he might actually be able to kill him here. Giga Drain comes up just short. Had that been HP Grass rather than Giga Drain, that would have gotten that kill. So that's one of those situations where, even though Giga Drain obviously has the healing, HP Grass with the higher base power and more PP would have been the better move. And that might cost Stratos here. That being said, he's still, even though he's down a poke, is in a pretty good position. He also dodges Toxic here. He's got all three layers of spikes down. He's controlling the tempo. And that hidden power is going to be shown as ice. If it were grass there, it obviously would have been super duper resisted by the Skarm. But HP ice will be good enough. Swampert comes in on a blanked T-Bolt in what is now a 4-4 to -4 situation. However, he does not respect the possibility of HP Grass, and indeed, Fredazi has that. And now he's getting even more tempo back as Stratos blanks on Earthquake. Two very bad turns in a row. However, he is not CB locked. He surprises him by switching it up to Rock Slide, which despite not being Choice Banded and the Intimidate, is going to be enough to kill the Mence, leaving us in a 3-3. It's been a fast-paced neck-and-neck series so far. And there's a big flinch for Ferdazi when he needs it. He's been on the bad end of the hacks throughout the series so far, but that flinch helps him a ton in winning this game. So now Aerodactyl looking to dodge a Meteor Mash, which he does not do. And Stratos is not going to show the last poke. Presumably it is something that cannot prevent itself from simply being boomed on here. And just like that, another fast game. Fredazi, Shit Rock Enjoyer, is going to send us to Game 3. Look at these lightning games here. 21 turns and 20 turns. Very, very fast. Maybe we'll get something slower, but these are two guys that both seem bound and determined to play aggressive teams. And there's nothing wrong with that. Being proactive is often the right thing to do. What will happen in the third game? Like I said, haven't watched these. Genuinely don't know how it plays out. But I'm super duper looking forward to it. And as a final reminder, it's for a spot in the finals of this tournament. The 2022 Pokemon Perfect ADV Championship. Alright, third and final. Shit Rock Enjoyer, that's Fredazi. On the bottom again, Stratos, that's Jumpy23. On the top again, here's the game. Meta and Hariyama, respectively. Interesting. And he stays in for Thunder Punch. That must have been anticipating something along the lines of a Skarmory, but obviously that didn't come. Hari comes back now and again tries to bait out an explosion, but again it doesn't come. He goes for Thunder Punch. Now here's Protect. That's going to find Earthquake, which is interesting. If you have both Thunder Punch and Earthquake, you usually don't have Meteor Mash. Usually the set is Thunder Punch, EQ, HP, Grass, and Boom. And we'll see if Stratos plays accordingly. They Earthquake back and forth, but the faster meta, which is weird because it's mixed, but the faster meta seems to belong to Fredazi on the bottom. Stratos likely has little or no speed investment since he's a bulky gross. He should be aware of Explosion here. It doesn't mean he's going to pull the trigger, but I, I would feel very strongly that he does have Explosion. Stratos doesn't play around it this turn. Here comes Focus Punch on Hariyama, which is going to do a pretty decent chunk at 44%, or 43%, rather. But now he's going to Focus Punch as well. 
It's going to be both intimidated and resisted, however. But Hariyama's got a pretty beefy base attack stat, and he's got stab behind it. So even with intimidate and resistance, it'll do 31%. Starmie comes into a Dragon Claw, no problem. He's going to T-Wave here, potentially activating Guts on Hera. Salamence comes in as the emergency check. And that Rock Slide is devastating. A one-hit KO, even through Intimidate. Guts confirmed. That is not a Swarm Heracross to do that kind of damage. That is Guts, and that is a bad para for Stratos. And a full power there. It would have been an amazing play if he could resist the temptation to boom. And he had clicked Earthquake there to snipe the meta. But we'll never know. Power at a bad time. This one, unfortunately for Stratos, is looking like the least close of the three. For Dazi, in very good shape in this game. Flat out up 6-4. to four. And he has two unrevealeds in the back. Even though I would assume Stratos can guess pretty accurately what those unrevealeds are. This is a pretty well-known team and a pretty straightforward archetype. A lot of people call it blue offense, but there's only so many things that could be in the back. Stratos knows what he's up against, but he has to catch a break here, and that is pretty unlucky. There's a lot of opportunities for that to go differently. Had he crit there, had he full parried there, had he dodged the Megahorn through the paralysis there, but none of that occurs. Instead, Heracross hits two improbable Megahorns through Paralysis, which the odds of that are not fantastic, but the RNG cooperates in this game for Frudazi when he needs it to, and just like the game before, Stratos does not even show his last poke. He simply packs it in. This one, unfortunately, like I said, was the least close of the three. This one was tight. This one was tight. This one was not. And man, what a fast series. 21, 20, and 24 games. The entire best of three. All th It goes three games, and it goes only 65 turns for the entire set. Yeah, you don't see that very often, but these guys were bound and determined to play offensive teams. I don't fault them for it. They both know what they're doing. The winner here through to the finals is going to be the Brazilian for Dazi. And like I said, he'll be against either Leech or Blues, but that is yet to be determined because at the time of this recording, that match has not played. I assume that is going to be some Sunday gaming, and I will bring it to you soon after it happens, and we will know our finals matchup for Dazi will be waiting. In the meantime, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, Please do hit that like button. Takes you half a second, one click. Makes a difference for me. Keeps me motivated, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching.